Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the podcast. Um, today doing something, uh, part of the menu for the month. And I was really hoping that I would have somebody to actually interview for this um, particular thing. It is uh, Danny Masterson is the subject of this one. And there is a person that I've known for couple of years now maybe um who was knows a lot and even though they're not going to be here you know on the other end of the phone line they have provided me with some stuff um to share which i will read to you but it, it still would have been nice to um have her on i think one of the well i know one of the reasons that she didn't want to is not just because she's scared but because she, she hates him so much and that she tends to, and she does this when she, when she writes to me and talks to me too, is she goes, she says things that sometimes that she can say to me, but that she doesn't want to say necessarily out loud where other people can hear it um, because then she tends to, as she says, get in trouble. <laughs> there is nothing that she's ever said that I think that would you know, necessarily get her in trouble with um, Danny Masterson or anything or tick off Scientology any more than they're already ticked off at her. Um, but <clears throat> she has a, sometimes she will say things about people that are not necessarily public figures. And I told her, you know, if you come on, I would keep you safe from that. But um, I totally understand. And it is her story to tell. And it is her, she is the one who has to, live with the situation and live with the fear of um, Scientology and everything. But one of the reasons I added um, Danny Masterson to the schedule was because of what I said, oh, a couple things. Because I saw that, you know, Ashton and Danny were partying last the 10 days ago or something like that over the weekend. And Mila was there too. And it really, really irritated me. It really ticked me off. And when I spoke to <clears throat> my friend, she was also very ticked off. And that was one of the reasons she didn't want, because she, she's very angry about it. Because what it's showing is that Ashton doesn't believe any of the victims that have come forward who claim that um, they were raped. And here's the thing. Ashton doesn't have the the very best reputation with women, as we have, uh, as I talked about in the podcast before. So it's that, you know, something that I wanted to talk about because I feel like Danny Masterson's getting a pass. Netflix, the only reason Netflix fired him from the ranch was not because of all the, the, the victims coming forward and sharing their story. It was none of that. It was because one of the a Netflix executive screwed up when he was talking to one of the victims that he didn't know was a victim and said that they don't believe the victim's stories. Well, obviously that all went to hell. And so then Netflix had no choice and they because they basically a top executive came out and said we don't believe the victims. And I find that a lot with Netflix. If you look at the House of Cards stuff, it took a lot. Okay, everybody knows what Kevin Spacey was doing. It took a lot. They um, they hired Henry Cavill, who dates high school students. And um, they didn't have a problem with that, even though he lost his Superman gig, right? So it's they they basically just said, we don't believe the victims. And, of course, there was this huge backlash. And the next thing you know, Danny got fired. But the only reason he got fired was because a Netflix executive screwed up, not because he raped these women. Okay? And there's something wrong with that. This is not one person. This is not two people. This is not three people. This is four people, five people, whatever. More. Okay? Most file police reports, and it is against the law to file a false police report. Police have not arrested any of these people for filing a false police report. None of them. And when you're filing a police report for something like rape, if you're lying about it, the police are going to toss you in jail. They haven't done that. And that should have been enough. 
for, for Netflix, but it wasn't. And apparently, this is what I don't understand. Mila and Ashton have children, okay? Are they saying that they would not believe their child later? Because that's what they're doing. They're saying that they believe Danny way more than they believe all of these victims. So to me, it says, hey, when our children get older, we are not going to believe them. We're going to believe somebody. It's, it's such a crock. You know, I get it. If there's one, one victim and this is somebody that you've known forever, you might go, oh, it's tough. You know, I always want to believe the victims, but I know this guy and I've known him for 20 years or whatever. But when there's a second victim added and a third and a fourth and a fifth, is this the kind of person that you want your kids later to say, um, Mom, Dad, why were you hanging out with the rapist? Why were you partying with the rapist when everybody knew that he was a rapist? Is there a reason? And what are they going to say? Well, we didn't believe the victims. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a tough road. That's a tough thing to have to sell to your children. Um, so anyway... <clears throat> This, this whole first part is stuff that um, she sent to me. And this first one is from November 7th, 2017. And I made a blind out of it, but I can't. The blind is really complicated if you're reading it out loud. It's really simple if you read it because I, I made it simple and I numbered everything. But I'm going to read some names in this. So again, because of the fact that you listen, uh, you're going to hear all this and the only other people are going to hear it maybe maybe on a, a Black Friday. Maybe. Um, but there's going to be one name that I, I don't say uh, just because they just certain kind of things. Um, but I will say the names that the, <clears throat> like Danny's name and stuff. Okay. Um, so basically somebody who worked for Danny was in their mid twenties and they, um, started hooking up with, Danny's brother Chris when he was about 15 Chris is the one that was on Malcolm in the Middle so all this is in a blind item and you, like I said you can go look I think it's November 7th 2017 if you want to read along I'm going to double check on that now that I said that to everybody let me see if I can find it um, yeah November 7th 2017 it's the big one um, maybe I should read it and then we can fill in the blanks with some names uh, otherwise I'm just going to be summarizing it as I go. Well, we'll do it like that. Uh, okay. So this person lived with the family and, and basically for a year hooked up, I say hooked up, he was 15 years old, had sex, but let's sad sex slash raped. It's a statutory thing, right? Um, for a year. Now... Uh, they're, they're, the night that um, this person broke up with Chris, then um, they went into Danny's room while he was sleeping, woke him up, and then they had sex. Okay? And this all comes from, like I said, the, the person, this person. But uh, Danny's the one who told her this. It's not something she deduced on her own. He just flat out said, hey, this is what happened. Um, then, which is interesting, later, um, Danny hired this person to work for him again. This person knew, um, about one of the rape victims and then was best friends with victim number two of rape. Okay. Okay. And then victim number three also told her. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I really appreciate it. 
You can uh, catch my blog seven days a week, crazydaysandnights.net. Over a hundred posts, updates every single day. Uh, social media, you can find me at NT Lawyer on Instagram and on Twitter. And of course, you can subscribe to Patreon for the full episode at patreon.com backslash NT Lawyer.